Kai and Sifu Funky Monkey. Welcome to my Dojo of Love. Regular viewers of the show will deduce that it's time for another Kung Fu Panda review. But not this time. Nope, we're right up to date with the movies, though I may delve into Legends of Awesome or some of the TV specials at some point. Now, today, I'd like to talk to you about John Carpenter. Yes, that John Carpenter, director of Halloween and The Thing. Anyone who follows his career will know of his desire to make a martial arts movie. And that movie is today's subject, Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> Released in 1986, Big Trouble in Little China centres around an ancient sorcerer and a centuries-old curse. Lopan must marry a green-eyed woman to be released from the curse upon him, but the woman he's set his sights on just happens to be Wang Chi's fiancée. While originally losing heavily over similarly themed Eddie Murphy vehicle The Golden Child, Big Trouble in Little China has over the years become a cult classic holding a steady 82% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. So come with me to the back alleys of San Francisco, but be warned, there's gonna be trouble. Big trouble in Little China. Meet Jack Burton. He's about as salty a truck driver as you're ever likely to meet. And he's not above a spot of backstreet gambling which lands his good buddy Wang in a $2,200 hole. Serves him right for blowing $1,100 on backstreet gambling when he's supposed to be saving up to marry his fiancée. <laughs> yeah, $1,100. He went double or quits with that bottle stunt. Actually, speaking of that bottle stunt, if you do it right, it's actually quite impressive. I've seen it done right before. And to stop him welching, Jack takes Wang to the airport. Where we meet, Miao Yin, and a couple of nasty looking crooks, who were in the wrong place at the right time. But they crossed the wrong trucker. As Jack and Wang follow these Lords of Death into Chinatown. But oh dear, our heroes just drove down the wrong alley, and right into a good old fashioned turf war. This is our main conflict. The conflict between the Chang Sing Brotherhood and the Wing Kong Gang. The Wing Kong are led by the immortal sorcerer Lo Pan. Oh, we'll get to him, but not just yet. The Chang Sing and the Wing Kong battle it out. Until they're scared away. But in escaping, our heroes run into someone. Oh, nasty. Which separates Jack from his beloved Pork Chop Express. Back at Wang's restaurant, this whole thing is partially explained. The Lords of Death are just another arm of the Wing Kong, and the Wing Kong are, as I said, led by Lo Pan, who was cursed to be a ghost 2,000 years ago. And the only way that he can break the curse is by marrying a green-eyed girl who can handle a burning sword and light the eyes of a dragon. And so Jack must go undercover to attempt to rescue Miao Yin. But someone, or something, has other plans. But again, they cross the wrong trucker. Wang and Jack head to the Wing Kong Exchange which goes about as well as you'd expect. <gasps> they are taken before David Lopan himself. Yes, David. Well, a 2,000 plus year old ancient ghost sorcerer, he'd have to give himself a modern sounding name or people would get suspicious, you know? Lopan has no time for interlopers. Our heroes escape their bonds, and head to rescue a few other captives, which is difficult. Because they spend the next 15 to 20 minutes of the film running a gauntlet of hells to get to the exits. But ultimately successful. 
Yes, successful. If you don't count the fact that they still haven't rescued Miao Yin, they've now lost another member of their party, and Lo Pan's still alive. But other than that, great success! <laughs> but the Chang Sing have their own sorcerer, Egg Shen. And so our heroes, alongside a contingent of Chang Sing fighters, head back to Lo Pan's complex. After a spot of distinctly Chinese courage, ah. the stage is set for our finale. So now that Lo Pan has two green eyed women to choose from, he performs the ceremony to make himself mortal once again. The good guys don't interrupt him, because they want him to be mortal so that they can kick his butt. And then, big ol' battle between the Wing Kong and the Chang Sing. And old Jack Button befalls a series of mishaps. Poor guy. But all too soon, Lo Pan absconds. But Jack follows. Old Jack Button finishes the fight in the old Jack Burton style. And our heroes make their escape. And so our movie ends with old Jack Burton returning to the open road. And hey, for his trouble, old Jack Burton gets $3,300 out of his good buddy Wang. Which leads to another House of Love top tip. A good deed is its own punishment. But anyway, that was Big Trouble in Little China. And you know, I'm gonna put this one into my house of love. This is a lot harder edged than the comedy of the Golden Child. It's definitely not for children. But is it for me? Well, that's a big question. At its core, this movie seems to be the story of an ordinary guy caught up in an extraordinary situation like someone transported a million light years from home, or thousands of years through time, in either direction. Jack Burton is mostly a point of view character for the audience, and deliberately ends up not taking a big part in the climactic battle. Kurt Russell is mostly abrasive, definitely down to earth, a salt of the earth trucker who just can't believe what the hell he's gotten caught up in. Dennis Doon's Wang Chi, nominally the hero of the piece, is less characterised, but definitely driven in his single-minded pursuit to rescue his love. Kim Cattrall's Grace Law, to one who has seen Kim Cattrall in other productions, seems to be Kim Cattrall playing herself again. On the villain side, the always watchable James Hong, who provided so much soul as the voice of Poe's foster father in Kung Fu Panda, makes for an enticing ancient villain, and amuses somewhat as a decrepit old man perhaps not as eminently hateable as some villains, but shot through this movie in a way that a lot of villains I've seen recently haven't been. The Flow, for a 95 minutes plus credits movie, takes its time to build as we move from confusion, to rescue, to final battle, to denouement. And it's slightly episodic, and slightly disjointed at times, flitting between Group A and Group B, or between hero and villain, but it's easy enough to follow along. So, is it a perfect movie? No. Kim Cattrall is playing Kim Cattrall. Kurt Russell might grate on you occasionally with the Western philosophy of punch it first and ask questions later. And let's not forget that this wasn't written by an actual Chinese writer. But we're not talking about the highest of high art productions. This isn't a masterpiece character study on the Chinese American community of San Francisco. This isn't a melodrama of a man who seeks to be reunited with his love. This is a mid-80s fantasy chop socky flick directed by the guy that brought us The Thing. It's entertainment, and it's definitely entertaining. So if you're looking for a crazy cult classic where demons, monsters, truckers and green-eyed girls collide, then you're looking for trouble. Big trouble. In Little China. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if that doesn't work, please consider sharing this link with anyone you think would be interested in my house of love. And if you want to be extra awesome, check out my crowdfunding links in the description below. But for now, I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days and great entertainment. Jamajola, Ho Jimen!
Thank you.